Okay, curve sketch. Hey, whoa, 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 stop that. Okay, there we go. Alright, curve sketching. We've talked about this in class. Uh, basically, it's just throwing together everything we know about finding characteristics of functions. If I ask you to sketch an accurate graph or when we're doing curve sketching, these are all of the elements that I want included. Uh, from the algebra pre-cal stuff, you need to find x and y-intercepts and any discontinuities. Uh, when it comes to using calculus, I want you to find the intervals of increasing and decreasing, um, local extrema, intervals of concavity and inflection points. So those six things I want you to find when we're doing curve sketching. Uh, and here's a couple of examples we're going to do. Um, first, I like to do the algebra stuff. It's a little bit easier. So I'm going to start by finding intercepts. I'll set this equal to zero. Uh, and if I'm going to set that equal to zero, I want to factor. Uh, remember, when you factor, you factor out the lower exponents. That'll be x to the 2 thirds will be pulled out, leaving me with 3 minus 2 x to the 1 third, and then we'll set each of those factors equal to 0. Uh, so we get 1 of x equals 0. That's one x-intercept. Label that because I'm going to get confused later. Um, do keep them labeled because eventually you'll get like x equals something as a critical number or a possible inflection point. So when you write x equals something, make sure you label what's happening at that x-coordinate because we're going to have all kinds of crazy stuff happening. Uh, the next one, 3 minus 2x to the 1 third equals 0. Uh, let's move the 3 over and divide by negative 2. That will give me positive 3 halves. X to the 1 third, I will cube both sides, and that will give me 27 over 8, which is 3 point, um, that'd be 3 eighths, which is 3.375. And so there's another x-intercept. Uh, to get my y-intercept, we will simply plug in 0 for x. So y is going to be 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0, which is 0. So those are my intercepts, and that's a good start. Uh, no discontinuities. There are no fractions. I do have a cubed root, uh, but you can plug in positive or negatives into cube roots. So there's nothing that throws any red flags in the discontinuity world. So no discontinuities, which means I will now dive into the calculus aspect of this. Um, which means I need to find my derivative. So let's start by finding the first derivative, which would be, I'm bringing down the two-thirds. Two-thirds times three is two. X to the negative one-third minus two. Set that equal to zero. Um, let's see. That's going to be X equals one, isn't it? X to the negative one-third. I move the two over and divide by two equals one. So X does equal one. That's a critical number, right? That's a critical number, uh, which means I now need to do my little sign chart to find my intervals of increase and decrease. So let's do a number line, and we'll put one on my number line. That is my critical number. That made my derivative equal to zero. So f prime or y prime is equal to zero there. I need to pick a test point, so I'll plug in maybe two on the right side and zero on the left side. Um, oh, interesting. I didn't catch this. Uh, zero is actually another critical number. I didn't catch that. Um, I'm glad I tried to pick zero for my test point. Why is zero a critical number? Anybody catch that? Anybody know? Anybody know? Anybody know? Anybody know? Uh, my derivative, if I got rid of that negative exponent, my derivative is the same thing as saying 2 over x to the 1 third, right? And you cannot divide by zero. So, um, x equals 1 makes my derivative equal to 0, but for x equals 0, my derivative fails to exist. So that is a critical number. So on my number line, I actually have to plug in two points. I have two values I need to plug in, that being 0, which makes my derivative fail to exist. Always be aware of stuff like that. And 1 makes my derivative 0. So now when I pick my test points, I have to pick negative 1, something between 0 and 1, maybe 1 half, and something after 1, maybe 2. And so we'll have to plug that in. Let's see. So if I plug in negative 1 for my derivative, negative, the cube root of negative 1 is still negative. So that will be a negative number minus a negative number, which is negative. Right? Uh, if I plug in 1 half, um, ooh, the cube root of 1 half. Holy cow, this one's going to be a little bit trickier than I thought. The cube root of 1 half, 2 divided by that, that's going to be something larger than 2. Hmm. 
If I plug in one half, the cube root of one half. Let's not plug in one half. Let's plug in something sexy like one eighth. I'm going to plug in one eighth because I can find the cube root of one eighth. And by the same token, over here, I'm going to plug in eight. I want to plug in numbers that I can do the cube root of. So that will be two divided by the cube root of one eighth would be one half minus two. Two divided by one half is four minus two is positive. Okay, then when I plug in eight, the cube root of eight is two. Two divided by two minus two is negative. So there we go. So I know now that my function decreases on the intervals negative infinity to zero and one to infinity. I know that my function will increase on the interval zero to one. And based on this number line, using the first derivative test, I know I have a local min at x equals zero. Um, and if I plug zero into my function, that is, gives me a y-coordinate of zero. So my local minimum is at the point zero, zero. I have a local max at the point at the x-coordinate of one. And if I plug one into my function, three times one minus two times one is one. So I have a local max at the point one, one. Uh, and that's an interval of increase and decrease. So there's some important information that we're going to use when we're graphing. Uh, so I have x-intercepts, y-intercepts, decrease, increase, local min, and local max. The last thing I have to find is my interval of concavity, which is going to need to be done on the next page. So I'm going to pull my derivative onto the next page. Pull my derivative onto the next page, which will, let's see, uh, my second derivative is going to be negative two-thirds x to the negative four-thirds, which is the same thing as negative two over three x to the positive four-thirds. Um, and again, I cannot plug in zero for x, so y double prime of zero does not exist, which is going to be my only interesting point, not a critical point, can't call it a critical point because it's a second derivative, but I will still plug zero in on the number line when I determine my intervals of concavity. And I know that my second derivative does not exist at zero. And it makes sense that my second derivative doesn't exist because my first derivative doesn't exist at zero. So if my first derivative doesn't exist, my second derivative can't exist at that point. So we'll plug in our test points. I'll plug in maybe um, negative one and positive one. I can do cube roots of that. Uh, but the nice thing about the bottom is it's an exponent of which is essentially going to make anything positive. Even though I take the cube root of a negative, when I take it to the fourth power, that will remain positive. So my numerator is negative. My denominator will always be positive, unless I plug in zero, which I'm not going to. So I'm negative on the left side of x equals zero. If I plug in positive one, I have negative something on top. On bottom, is definitely positive. So my function is going to be concave down. everywhere except at zero, and we cannot include zero because my derivative, second derivative fails to exist there. So I'm concave down everywhere to the left of zero and everywhere after zero. Okay, so there's my concave down section. There is no inflection point because I never change concavity, right? No inflection points. You must change concavity in order to have an inflection point. We're always concave down. No inflection points. And now we simply take all of this information we just found and roll it into one big graph. So let me get uh, a y-axis and x-axis. And let's start plotting the key points first. Let's have an x-intercept of 0 and 3.375. So an x-intercept of 0 and 1, 2, 3.375, which is going to be about right there, an x-intercept. My y-intercept is zero. I've already graphed. Um, I do have a local minimum at zero, zero. So that's a local minimum already plotted. I have a local max at the ordered pair one, one. So at one, one, I will have a max. Let's see. Um, and then no asymptotes. 
Something I forgot to look at is horizontal asymptotes. Ooh, I need to, I meant to throw that in my list. Um, we do need to find horizontal asymptotes, uh, and there is no horizontal asymptote on this one. No horizontal asymptotes because this is, uh, if you wanted to write this as a rational function, my top degree is bigger than the bottom, so there's no horizontal asymptote. Uh, and using this, let's see, my function decreases to the left of zero, so I'm going to start making some notes to myself. My function will decrease everywhere to the left of zero. And that sign chart said my function increases between zero and one, so a very short interval of increase, and then decrease everywhere after. And then let's see. That was everything on this page, wasn't it? That was everything on this page. Then I have intervals of concavity, which my function was always concave down, except at zero. That was kind of a weird spot, so concave down everywhere except zero. Um, so decreasing concave down, and then concave down and increasing back to concave down. And notice my derivative does not exist at zero, but my function does exist. So that means I will have a cusp or a corner at that point where my derivative fails to exist. So I will decrease concave down to that point. I need to have a cusp, increase to that point, and then decrease forever. So this is what this function is going to look like. It is always going up as I travel left. It's going to kind of level off some, but this is going to be what the graph of this function would resemble. So. There we go. And I think I am about out of time. I may just stop on that one. We'll do some more in class.